Shubh Din, Good Morning, Assalamu Alaikum. We have a wonderful personality, a distinguished person, Mr. Amresh Mishra, who has contributed in the field of literature, writer, author, and also man who has been in the forefront as a social activist. So now we are going to have a discussion for a very short while to discuss about the recent untoward incidents in India. Sir, I yeah. want to ask you, not in my name, that is coming in the hashtag. Right. You know, it's become a social media, people are all spreading this word, you know, not in my name. Right. Uh, condemning the brutal lynching that is happening in India, the untoward incidents. And to, to the extent that even the Prime Minister Modi, you know, just in yesterday's news I happened to see, he condemning the Gaurakshaks and saying that even Gandhiji, he would not like to see these kind of you know, incidents happening. Do you have anything to say on this line, sir? <laughs> it's very interesting, uh, this question. Actually, uh, we all know that lynchings are happening and, you know, they are not, they are almost like this uh, tidal wave which is unstoppable. The Prime Minister saying that, uh, that uh, uh, cow-related violence in fact, he used the word uh, Gau Bhakti, ki Gau Bhakti ye nahi hai. That, uh, that this is not cow worship, you know, uh, killing other people or lynching other people. This is what he was, was referring to. But then he said that uh, ye Gandhi ji ko achha nahi lagega, achha nahi lagta. He also took Vi, uh, uh, Vinoba Bhave's name. Now, when the Prime Minister says something like this, we have to understand what he's trying to tell his people, mm -hmm. his core constituency, and then, uh, at the, you know, uh, then then comes the question of, of of the message he wants to give to the society. So, on the face of it, uh, the venue was Savarmati Ashram, and uh, his taking the name of Gandhi, it fitted in well with the you know with the surroundings, and it 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 uh, on the face of it, it was a message of peace, taking Gandhi's name, asking the violence to stop. But the way he said it is important. Because he said that Gandhi ji ko achha nahi lagega. Agar Gandhi ji hote to unko achha nahi lagta. To ye jo, uh, you know, ye, you see, this is a, some kind of a message which, which he's trying to send to his cadres. And he's trying to say that, well, uh, Gandhi ji might not have liked it. Uh, be a little moderate in what you're doing be a little circumspect in what you're doing. But this is, I will not take this message as, as, as Modi finally telling Gaurakshaks to stop. No, he has, he, he has, that would have, that would have been a different message altogether. Okay, Gandhi ji ko achha nahi lagega. Ah. Does that mean even Modi ji ko achha nahi lagega? Nee, the, it means ki Modi ji, ke hum jo hain, majboor hain, ye kehne ke liye ki tum log ruko. I have a very, uh, you know, candid question. See, on one fine evening, Modi ji appears in front of the television, international media, and just demonetize the entire 500 and 1000 rupee currency. On one evening, he could do that. If he wanted to do the same with Gaurakshas after so many incidents, instead of condemning time and again, can't he take a stand and ban them immediately? Why isn't taking that kind of a bold action as people would expect him to be? This is because uh, I think he needs uh, the Gauraksha violence. Gauraksha violence is... You is think he needs... Yeah, yeah, he needs no. Gauraksha violence. Absolutely, he needs Gauraksha violence. Because without Gauraksha violence, they do not have a narrative for 2019. When Modi came to power, the basic point was that he, as a Vikas Purush, that, uh, that he will pursue the politics of development. But, you know, since uh, it has been three years, FDI is not coming, the economy is not picking up, then you have done, uh, then you demonetized, and that has further led to a crisis even, uh, even in the pharma sector. Small, business, uh, small businesses are closing down. So now you have to go to plan B, which is uh, communal tension, communal polarization, and this and and right now he needs Gorakshar. If if this violence stops, then of course you know he and he has, he he also 
said what is what he said, keeping in view the presidential elections, you know, 17 July. So some message had to go out that, well, you know, that, that I'm trying to placate uh, things. But this is hypocrisy because we last year also he made a similar statement. This time, in fact, it was a much more coded thing where he was actually basically telling, telling his supporters to take a pause, to just pause for a while, maybe till the, you know, till, till 17 July. Uh, and then and then to go on because uh, the ultimately uh, the, the ultimate objective of this exercise of this Gorakshak violence is to force the Muslims to uh, to retaliate. Okay. And 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 uh, and they want you know they, they want at least they are waiting for an opportunity where someone if nothing else drives a car into people you know and and uh, and, and and some action takes place and then they can term it as a big incident and then they will justify more violence against Muslims based on that incident. Number two, if that doesn't happen, if supposing things go on as they are and Muslims, they, uh, you know, they do not yeah, uh, Indian take Muslims this, take this, they don't yeah, retaliate this yeah, way. Yeah, 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 they don't uh, take this way. Yeah. Then the next part is to organize a, a terrorist attack in India. You and organize a terrorist attack. Yeah. Absolutely. What do you mean by organizing? Organizing means that, you see, terrorism nowadays, it's an international business. There are, there are many international agencies involved and they do things for governments. Like, for example, you, you know, there are agencies who are in sync and they are like, for example, Mossad, CIA, you know, maybe RAW, ISI. They have their own, uh, they, uh, they have their own conflicts also. At the same time, they can get together when an operation is being planned, and this and 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 uh, the government of the day, whichever country you know, the government pays for this, and they get it done, if it suits them politically. And this has been happening in Europe for quite some time. But uh, but uh, has it happened in India uh, any time uh, before this? India, we suspect that two, you suspect uh, that that no. twenty six by eleven, okay, twenty six by eleven was a kind of a desperate uh, attempt to stop Karkare's investigations because Karkare's investigations were leading to a point where uh, where Modi might have been implicated directly. Because Pragya Thakur, after Pragya Thakur, Rajkumar Purohit, Asima Nand, you know, the, uh, the name of an RSS uh, leader, Indresh, had already cropped up. Uh, the, the IB was getting involved. The, it was, and, and uh, on the Ishrat Jahan encounter, uh, Modi was, you know, falling into the net, and then, the, and then there is the, the then there was a Hiran Pandya uh, thing. So there were so many things, and uh, Karikare had to be eliminated. Now, what is a false flag operation? False flag, a uh, false flag operation is that supposing if 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 and and this is a classic uh, term, uh, you know, in the spy agencies. That supposing if I, if I have to take out five people in a hotel who are who are living in a hotel, then maybe I'll have to blow up the whole of you know, and and kill like 95 innocent people. Then those five will also be killed. So it's like so basically you know the the, the terrorist incident, they wanted to get to Karkare, they wanted to there were many other agendas, but but let's uh, let's stick to one. 26 by 11 was was a kind of an attempt to uh, to uh, to to stop uh, you know what was going on and to stop these investigations, especially on on Hindu terrorism, and it it did not work out the way they wanted it to work out. But but it was an organized thing, and it was not something which just you know a few terrorists just woke up one morning and decided to attack the Taj. It didn't happen that way. Okay, so how do you see the future of uh, India in the next two years when all of these kind of incidents are happening? Do you expect polarization of the communities? Do you expect that uh, BJP coming to power? You see, polarization there now BJP only has polarization left. I mean, this is the plank which they are going to play till till 2019. And they need some kind of a... Uh, they need a series of incidents. So right now they are focusing on Gauraksha violence. After this, they can create another issue on which violence against Muslims is justified. 
because they feel that the old policy of communal riots is a bit problematic because then you get international uh, you know the international forces start um, intervening amnesty international starts intervening and then when you have a scene where thousands of muslims are killed or you know then, then it becomes a mess now he, modi wants to i think you know he wants to avoid he wants to avoid this mess and the way they have uh, and goraksha violence like isolated incidents which can easily be disowned they can easily say that these people are acting on their own they have nothing to do with rss or bjp but these incidents are planned they are planned they are set into motion in all these incidents if you see muslims uh, have been caught in areas where they are few in number where they are isolated and there is always a group of 8 to 10 people like in junaid's case you saw even in akhlaq's case his his was you know i think the lone house or just one of the two or two three houses of muslims in that village so they will do this because people people don't know the context so they they take it as if as if these were bad muslims who were trying to do something bad and uh, you know what the gorakhshak did was 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 right so this kind of a polarization whenever a muslim is, is is killed it creates a kind of a and on this issue it creates a kind of a uh, polarization and they want to continue this and they will and they want to add more issues into it okay so what initiative have you taken to build in bridges amongst the communities the muslims and the hindus so much of polarization is happening and that has become a tool for the uh, people who claim to be nationalists uh, but actually they are pseudo nationalists who are trying to divide the people of india so what have we got to do in the coming days so that we break this uh, polarization you see we have to raise an issue which unites hindus and muslims now we were we have been talking about the issues of brotherhood that how india has been a land of migrants and people have come here from different areas they have mingled together and they have you know created a culture which is which is a composite culture but the rss has uh, a different narrative it is a narrative about one nation one religion one race one language even so now that that uh, that narrative do, do they somehow, still hold, somehow, to, hold to the one language thing uh, they still hold to that okay. they, they still hold to that and they are trying in fact they're trying their, this experiment in bengal first okay they're trying to kind of attack the bengali language okay and they're trying to and and you'll be you'll be surprised by the by the audacity because one would think that they will lose elections but somehow or the other you know this they are bringing out this latent feeling among you know among people especially in areas like bengal that uh, that we were hindus once and then the left and the leftists came and then they spoiled everything and let's get back to it and what's wrong in in learning sanskrit and hindi so these kind of this kind of a thing now for us it's a challenge it's a challenge because the india which was envisaged by uh, in the freedom movement and uh, and and the rss they didn't take part in the freedom movement in fact they stabbed the freedom fighters in the back now 1857 we have taken 1857 as the theme 1857 is india's first war of independence and the best part about is uh, about it is that it has uh, that 1857 produced martyrs in all of hindu castes all hindu all hindu castes sub castes and it was spread all over the hindi belt and each and every caste has its hero now what we are doing is that we are basically replacing anti muslim emotion uh, with with anti british emotion because you have to create and the politics of issues which used to be there before has been replaced by the politics of perception and emotion so we also have to create we also need to have a have an emotional narrative we have to tell people that 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 look uh, your ancestor he shed blood for this muslim or this muslim shed blood for your ancestor and now i am asking you mai us jaise hota hai hindi mein ki mai us khoon ki qeemat aap se mang raha hu ki wo jo wo jo lahu baha so kya aise beh gaya wo to you know it was that blood was shed to make a certain kind of a of a society where it was said 
दैट इवन इफ आर मजहब इज डिफरेंट दीन इज वन जो दीन की बात आई थी एटीन फिफ्टी सेवन में एंड दैट वॉज अ वॉर क्राई दैट ही बोथ हिंदू एंड मुस्लिम यूज टू से दीन 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 बिकॉज द इंटायर थिंग वॉज वी वी बिलोंग टू डिफरेंट फेस एंड एवरी थिंग बट आर दीन इज वन दिस इज दिस इज दिस इज अ बिग थिंग वी आर रेजिंग सर्टन इशूज लाइक फॉर एग्जाम्पल द ग्रेव्स ऑफ ऑफ क्रूअल ब्रिटिश ऑफिसर्स विच आर देयर इन लखनऊ एंड इन मैनी यू पी सिटीज एंड दीज आर मास मर्डर्स एंड द ग्रेव स्टिल कैरी लॉडेटरी फ्रेजेस प्लेक्स सो वी वॉन्ट वी हैव रेज एन इशू टू टू स्टॉम दीज ग्रेव्स एंड टू प्लेस वॉट देव एक्चुअली डन बिसाइड्स द ओरिजिनल प्लेक्स एंड दिस हैज क्रिएटेड एन इमोशनल सिनारियो in up parallel to the emotions they are generating and we have been able to uh, attract a lot of people and we have been able to put the the current bjp government in up for example on the back foot because we are saying that if you are nationalist then 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 why aren't you uh, addressing this issue number 2 the hindu nationalists a lot of people who have gone to bjp not out of a communal sense but because they think that this is the only party which talks of nationalism and congress is somehow corrupt and anti national and you know they have just appeased muslims and so we have to effect a division in the ranks of of of, of hindu nationalists okay based and on to bring the facts the, based, based on, on the facts, facts and and not in theory in right. practice on on the streets by building a movement by building a movement against the remnants of british imperialism which exists in india and which rankle hindus and muslim both and against which we can build a solid unity i think uh, we are already united you know by hearts and by the actions and like for me i'm i'm from the muslim community and you from the brahmin community and we are talking about things that matters us and when we can feel that we are together you know for a cause and for our own well being and that can happen only if we are united then the same thing should reflect to the entire society yeah. and that is impending upon the leaders of our communities who have to understand this and who have to pass it across the yeah absolutely nation. who have to understand the line of 1857 and to kind of start talking to uh, like you know uh, 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 like i have you know been um, i i'm going into the uh, um, um, into the dalits into obcs because these are the foot soldiers which the communal forces that uh, you know they are the foot soldiers of of communal forces who are used in riots i am going uh, amongst them and i am basically talking about their martyrs talking about the the contribution of their martyrs then bringing around the question that your martyrs your forefathers they fought along with muslims they wanted to make this kind of a nation you know we will read out the proclamations and all of it of 1857 and it is your your duty now to make sure that that vision which your forefather your forefathers saw gets a uh, translated into reality and we are now also it is not just that we are debating we are coming out on the streets we are launching a movement which movement is going to create problems for the bjp because they can't accept it they can't deny it the international media is going to be there on 9th august in in uttar pradesh and they are also looking at the whole thing as something which is which which directly impacts into british relations so it's an international issue and so it is through these kind of initiatives where we we involve uh, the hindus where where hindus come to the forefront they take it they take 1857 as their issue they confront the uh, the communal forces with with this narrative and then and then and then they defeat them and then obviously the follow up would be that the ganga yamuna tehzeeb will revive once more okay but i want to ask a very uh, simple question see when you were so vocal on the social media you had to face the consequences yeah. uh, to the extent that uh, you were also sent to the jail for about yeah. few days yeah. uh, don't you feel something of that kind of repercussions happening now no with that fear is always there but but it's not a fear it's not a fear is it it's like now now at that time i was in social media i was in delhi so at that time picking me up was you know some kind of a you know sensation but right now i am into politics i am i am organizing people 
I'm 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 into street politics literally I mean जो कि सड़क की राजनीति कहते हैं यूपी में so वहाँ पर out there obviously you know if even if you get arrested for some time it's fine because it's part of the political culture right you know the to get arrested while demonstrating so this is but but there is no exist uh, existential threat right now I mean you know we we are we are we are we are pretty Okay. But again, when violence will break out, I know. you know, uh, one never knows because in such a scenario, things can get you know violent suddenly, and we have to be pre- we have to be prepared also for that. True. We really pray to God Almighty for giving you more and more courage for this, because one needs to have the conviction in the heart and the true intentions to help people and help the nation and have. have the bravery to do all of these things thank you we thank um, you for uh, giving your time and if any of you wants to connect with mr amresh mishra you can follow him on twitter and he's very vocal there and also on facebook and we would like to connect with you all and spread the message of peace to the entire nation thank you one and all